So here we go with yet another take on the old Dingo portable game system. Coming from our friends at Retro Game, this is the Retro Game 300. And as you can see, the design hasn't changed much. It's still in that Game Boy shape. And they are very happy to point out that it's got super tempered glass screen and Omron shoulder buttons. Oh yes, well Omron do make good buttons, so maybe that is something to be proud about. On the side of the box, you can see we've got some details here. 3 inch screen, apparently 3 times 320 times 480. Uh, okay. External 1800 milliamp battery, maintains 6 hours. I can attest to that. I've been using this for quite some time and the battery hasn't run out yet. Uh, Super Temper Glass, support arcade games, Game Boy Advance, Super Famicom, SNES, Sega, Famicom, NES, Game Gear, Sega Master System games, a series. Um, yeah, okay. Ultra Large Capacity, TFT card, and music playing and picture browsing and ebook. Yeah, you can also play videos on this as well. There you go, quick look at that side, quick look at that side, and a quick look at that side. And on the bottom, absolutely nothing. So, what do you get in the box? Well, you get the good old manual. It hasn't changed, it's the same old manual that have been given us now for quite a while. Chinese on one side and English on the other. So, you can see there. You got the Chinese side and the English side right there. Nothing special at all. The same old system. All right. And also in the box, we get a registration card. Yep. We've got an AV cable for stereo video out. And we've got a charging cable and a cable also used to uh, send data across to the machine. And look at that. It's USB-C or so it would seem. Actually, I think this is probably a variant of a uh, micro USB made to look like USB-C. Um, I don't think it really is USB-C, to be honest. And a little carry pack, which the machine itself came in. All right, so let's take a look at the machine. So you can see it's the same old Game Boy design, but at least it's well made. We got good quality buttons. We got a good quality D-pad. Everything feels good on it. Over here, we've got the video out, also doubles as the um, headphone jack, the power input. On the side, we've got the on button volume control. Whoops, sorry, not volume control, my mistake. That's the micro USB card slot. And this side, we've got the volume control. And on the back here, we have the shoulder buttons with those Omron switches. And as you can see there, we've got the lithium ion battery. All right. So let's take a look at this machine up and running. Apparently this one is vastly improved over the previous models and can play a lot more things, a lot more stable. Let's take a look. Okay, so like previous iterations of this device, this one does actually come with a 60 Hertz screen. And I'm recording this video in 60 Hertz so you can see that in action. So here we are with, on the main emulator screen and let's start off with a bit of MSX. Now this emulator is pretty cool because it plays MSX1 and MSX2 games. Lovely. So I've installed quite a few things onto this micro SD card so let's take a look at them in action. Starting off with the MSX1 game, this is Commando. I hope that little red icon in the top of the screen doesn't mean the battery is about to run out. I sure hope not. And there we have it. That is MSX Commando. Running just like it does on a real MSX. And me dying, just like on a real MSX. All right, so we can exit the emulator very easily, just like that. And let's take a look at an MSX2 game. This is a Kumajo Dracula. Better known as Castlevania. Oh, Vampire Killer. Let's turn this one up a little bit.
Ooh. So as you can see, it runs MSX2 games pretty well. In fact, pretty much perfectly. And it's definitely 60 frames a second. All right, let's take a look at one more MSX2 game. Okay, Space Mambro. A very popular shooter for the MSX2. Now you might be able to see the screen updating on the sides of the image. Don't worry, it does that on a real MSX2. That's how it's meant to look. This is playing just as it would on a real MSX2. Alright, good stuff. Okay, let's take a look at some more emulators and we'll just do a quick montage of them all running side by side.
Okay, I'm going to talk over this one a little bit because this is the Ridge Racer sample disc, which has the um, original version and the hyper version. In other words, the version that runs at 60 frames per second. So let's take a look at it running regular Ridge Racer first. As you can see in the top corner, the uh, frame rate is above 50, pretty much at all times. Okay, so that was Ridge Racer original version, and as you can see, it runs it pretty much perfectly. But will it be able to run a PlayStation game that really pushes the system, such as the 60 frames per second high resolution version of Ridge Racer? Uh, somehow I doubt it. Let's take a look. Okay, the exact same course, everything, and as you can see, the frame rate's already dropped to 30 odd frames per second. So as you can see, it's really bad. So games that really push the PlayStation, this is not going to be able to uh, play them properly but um pretty much your average playstation game it's going to run it flawlessly almost there you go that is the retro game 300 a very capable little handheld machine that sells for under 50 dollars there's a link in the video description down below for this. It's currently $43. That might change by the time you've watched this video, but at the time of this video going live, it is $43 with free shipping. Now, for that price, this is an excellent little device. It even plays PlayStation, not all PlayStation games, but it plays some PlayStation games very, very well. As you saw with Harmful Park and the original Ridge Racer, it's running those at 50 to 60 frames per second. In fact, the only machine it should run, which it doesn't run very well, is the Super Nintendo. Uh, it's a bit of a shame games on that are hit and miss, but all your Mega Drive, Mega CD, PC Engine, your Mass System, your Nintendo, your Game Boy, your Game Boy Advance, apart from really complicated 3D games, all work really, really well on this device. And as you can see here, it's now running Quake 2 at a fairly decent speed. Unfortunately, this machine does have a downfall, and that is the screen it seems to be a little bit dark. Now, I don't know if they're all like that, but my particular unit has a very dark screen, and I have the uh, brightness set all the way to max. So um, keep that in mind. You have to look at it at the correct angle, and unfortunately, getting that correct angle while filming with the camera is not that easy. Plus, Doom uh, Quake 2 is rather dark, so uh, let's get rid of that. You can see if I exit out of that, um, it will be a little bit brighter. There you go, see? So yeah, keep that in mind that it does have a, a little bit of a dark screen, or at least this copy of it does, or this uh, machine does. And also keep in mind that none of the games you saw today come built in. Basically, when you get this, you get all the emulators. All these emulators were included. I didn't install any of these. These are all stock emulators. And um, yeah, they all work great. Well, apart from Super Nintendo, that is. So yeah, you will have to get your own games for it, but that's to be expected. So, as for a portable emulation device, 
thumbs up from me it's very very good link in the video description down below all right till next time guys keep on gaming and enjoy your games